Welcome to Benjamin TV. Today I'm bringing you one of my favorite dishes, mac and cheese. And this isn't gonna be like the easy version I had previously. This is gonna be the full shebang. Cheese sauce, finished in the oven, creamy and gooey, and homemade cheese sauce. So we're gonna go right into the ingredients and I'll show you how to cook it. Because we're gonna do it the more traditional way, before we even think about cheese, we have to make what's called a white sauce. To start off, you're gonna have milk some flour and some butter, salt and pepper just to flavor. I like to put two egg yolks in there as well as obviously the cheese, okay? I'll be putting all the ingredient amounts down below in the info box. For the crust that I'll be putting on the top, I will be using panko breadcrumbs, which is just a Japanese breadcrumb, it's a little more flaky, as well as room temperature buddy. I'm using an elbow macaroni here. If you really wanna make your mac and cheese savory and decadent, bacon. I've got a tutorial right here on how to cook your bacon. I would suggest cooking this ahead of time and chopping it up into small little pieces so it's ready to go when you're done with your mac and cheese. I'll be using a small little pot like this to make my white sauce. Before you even get started with your white sauce, make sure this is nice and warm. You'll need a baking dish like this, spatula, a whisk, the little wooden spatula. The things you want prepared before you even start cooking. Cooking your bacon is really important. Pre your oven at 500 degrees. Make sure your water is boiling for your pasta. Let's go ahead and go right into the white sauce. Get your pot nice and warm, okay? I would have this at like a medium heat. Throw your butter in there. Let your butter melt all the way through. Throw in your flour. Just throw all of it in, okay? Have your wooden spoon ready to go. And at this point, you cannot leave this white sauce. You have to always be stirring. Once that butter and flour is nice and mixed together, that's when you can start thinking about putting in the milk. Don't don't add your milk all at once. And if you have to, so it doesn't scorch or burn, take the pot off the heat just for a second, mix it and then return it. Go ahead and continue to do that until you've added all your milk or you get to consistency that you like. If you can wipe your finger across the spoon and the white sauce stays put, that's when you know it's ready for the rest of the ingredients. I've enhanced the flavor by adding salt and white pepper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and integrate my egg yolks. Now to do that, I won't dump them right in. What I'm gonna actually do is add a little bit of this white sauce into the bowl with the egg yolks. Take my whisk, whisk the egg yolks with the white sauce. Go ahead and add a little bit more white sauce. Once you've mixed that thoroughly, you can go ahead and add that right into your white sauce. Again, mixing while pouring in is very, very important. At this point, I'm done with my white sauce. The heat has been off for a good five minutes now. I've added my egg yolks. Now you can add the cheese. Now it's really important that the heat is off and this has cooled a little bit because that's gonna make for a more smooth, silky cheese sauce, okay? Again, just like when you were making the white sauce, continually stir as you add your cheese. I'm done with my cheese sauce and I can go ahead and set this to the side. Now I forgot to mention I did start my pasta about 10 minutes ago because I wanted that to be done just about when my cheese sauce was done. I'm done with my pasta. I've thoroughly strained it. You don't want leftover moisture I'm messing with your cheese sauce. My cheese sauce is done and I've got my bacon that's cooked up and chopped up. I'm going to go ahead and stir this all together. Add your bacon and mix it up. Now that you're almost done, you can't forget the panko crust on top. Add your room temperature butter to your panko breadcrumbs. Mix it with what God gave you, your hands, okay? And then you're gonna spread it liberally right onto the top of your mac and cheese. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this into my 500 degree oven for just five minutes, just until this gets golden brown. Oh, look at that, perfectly golden brown crust. You can see where the cheese that was underneath got a little bit of um, like a little golden brown char. Let this sit for a few minutes at least, if not five to 10 minutes to cool down and it's ready to eat. I'm telling you, takes a little longer, but absolutely worth it. Perfect for the holidays if you have a lot of people coming over. You could pre-make this, 
put it into the fridge, reheat it in the morning. Let's taste this. You gotta try it. That is good. Is that good? That's really good. It's a success. Go try it out, Benjamin TV. Now, if for some reason after five minutes this doesn't turn golden brown, go ahead and put the broiler on, but make sure you keep an eye on it because that broiler will turn this black in no time, okay? So, I just had a total fail. <laughs> I, um, I didn't listen to Judy and, and uh, I totally forgot, um, one, to set the timer, but I don't usually set a timer. Guess what? It cut on fire. It cut on fire. And now they're just sitting outside. They are literally, literally on flames. I wish I had got it on camera. It was kind of hilarious. I don't take no chances. 